what I wanted to share, and I saw something uh, in the chat box about what is happening to immigrants and COVID because of the pandemic right now and uh, undocumented immigrants. I work with immigrants in the city of Houston. I represent the office, the mayor's office for adult literacy in Houston. And many of our students, uh, adult students are uh, immigrants. But uh, I am also participating in a national research that is about to be published. In fact, later this month, hopefully, we're going to have a report uh, on what is happening because of the COVID in terms of education. How has COVID, the pandemic, the quarantine impacted what we do in the classrooms? The classrooms have now become um, uh, virtual classrooms in many cases. Uh, in most cases. And what has happened to the field of education? What has happened to our students, including immigrant students? What are the problems that we are facing in terms of teachers who have been forced overnight practically to go from a brick and mortar classroom teacher to being a teacher online, a, re a remote teacher, a virtual teacher? Were we prepared? One of the things that we found that is interesting is that and we, it's a group of seven, nine researchers from around the nation that is currently uh, analyzing the results of interviews with adult educators and adult literacy educators, including ESL educators all over the country. Uh, we had um, many interviews across the country. And right now, after having coded the interviews, we are analyzing the data and starting to uh, draft the report. And the interview, uh, interviews show us a very interesting picture of how things are changing and how things are um, going to remain changed into our foreseeable future. But one of the important things that we found out is how important professional development is. Uh, I've been working with professional development most of my life, but how important it is in terms of our readiness to face this different future. People talk about going back to normal. There is no going back to normal and probably there shouldn't be back to normal. We need to look at what the future is going to bring. The future is going to bring a, con a situation where we will need to bring back to the forefront that idea of the virtual, um, the, the, the digital divide. We need to address it because what we found uh, addressing the question earlier in the chat box about COVID and immigrants, we found that our immigrant families, even if the school district gave them laptops or any other device, the immigrant families don't have access to internet or they cannot afford programs, uh, plans with lots of data, or they go home and there is only one device and the children are now home from school and the adults are want, wanting to learn and they cannot, they have to share one device. So what kind of future do we have if we don't address the digital divide? That came very, very clear in our uh, interviews. And the issue of professional development to which I referred um, a moment ago is many teachers said that the programs that were already engaged in professional development when nobody foresaw a pandemic, but they, those programs were devoted to professional development. They have professional and personal development plans for their teachers. Those programs were able to adapt very quickly. The programs where they said, oh, we don't have resources for professional development, so the teachers were not really doing training on a regular basis. Those programs and those teachers had a very hard time uh, shifting. So th this is uh, what we are working on. We will have a report uh, probably at the end of this month, if not early in August, and uh, I would love to share it with you when it's available. That's all what I want to say, so that I respect the time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Frederick, for doing both of those things. Um, we really appreciate uh, you giving us some insight into this research before it's even published. Um, that was very kind of you. 
and to educate us on some of these issues that perhaps some of us were not really attuned to. Well, I, I appreciate you letting me talk about it. And typically, we don't talk about research before it's published, but we are not calling it research per se. We have interviewed people and informally, we're going to write a report. Now, because it's nationwide, we have researchers from all over the country, but we are doing this on our own. There is no institution, higher education institution that is supporting this research or paying for it. We came together because we are concerned about the, the issues. We are concerned about the impact in our communities, specifically on the immigrant community and the difficulties that they have adapting to the new reality. So we said, hey, let's do this. So it's all a, a loosely connected bunch of professionals and researchers that are very interested in finding out more about what is going on. That's why I'm sharing, if it was a journal, I could not share it. If it was a university a project, I could not share it, but it's all of us doing this uh, as volunteers. It just happens that we know how to do research. So uh, we are putting it together. Mm -hmm.